I had the pleasure and the opportunity to be a guest on a radio show called Secrets to Success. And these are excerpts from that radio show. This is the Thinking Reality Podcast, episode number 70. Hang on, here we go. Your destiny is by your design. Getting what you want in your professional life is gained by following a series of steps created by your mindset. Are you ready to start the journey? This is the Think Your Reality Podcast. Here's Mike Sims. You're now listening to the most unique show on radio, the show dedicated to making you a success. Mike Sims can make you a success with just a few words. Let's hear what he has to say. Mike, thanks for being with us. Bill, today. a pleasure. How are you? Now, Mike, you've written a great book, and uh, as I said to you before the show, I was searching around to find you so I could have you here on the show, but it has an unusual title, I Am, I Can, I Will. Explain the title. It's an affirmation. It's an affirmation about your life, and I love that you said it with such intensity. (laughs) I am, I can, and I will. And just as we told the audience, you're a man of few words. So there we have six <laughs> words. And uh, that's it, folks. The show is over. And we're done. Have a You can be day. a success if you just follow those words. But it is straightforward. And the book is really geared. If you're one of those people who say, oh, I really don't like to read a lot, this is perfect for you because there's probably less than 50 words on any page, but it's a lesson for every day. And I'm going to start out with one of them. You say that the majority of people meander through life hoping and wishing that things will change. Tell us about that. I think um, if you look at some of the statistics, well, I'll I'll ask you this way about an anecdote. If I were to ask you what day of the week do most heart attacks occur, what day would you tell me? Monday. Okay, you're correct. All right, what do I win? Johnny, tell him what he's won. (laughs) Part part two of the question, what time of day do they they occur? I'm going to say uh, 9 a.m. You're right there. Am I? Yes, you and are. And I didn't know this, and we didn't no, prep No, no, we did not. I'll but, get you for this later but, <laughs> on, because you could have really made me look bad. We but, could have done this for 100 questions. But you're spot it. on. They usually, the, the American Medical Association states that they happen between 4 and 10 o'clock in the morning. Now for the extra credit, tell me why. P- people are going to work, they're coming back after the weekend, and uh, presumably they don't really like their job. There you go. And that's exactly it. So my question is, why would you spend 40-plus hours a week or a third of your life, eight hours a day, doing something that doesn't give you any kind of joy in your life. Why would you do that? What would be the point of that? Well, we probably hope we get something, or uh, I'm thinking like most of us, this job will be a great resume builder, or it'll lead me to the next job that I like even less, or uh, <laughs> what's the, <laughs> sadly, expand it's true. on that. What's the next job? Uh, well, if I'm a, a regional manager, maybe I can be the district manager. Is that, what you, is is that what you chose? I'm, I'm being somewhat confrontational, but I want to get into the head of your listeners. Is that what you chose? No, I, I no. got the job because I put in a resume and someone said you're hired. Okay. And Did, I keep going up for money. I'm, I'm, again, I'm, no, no, I'm no. Assuming. And you're, you're, you're 100% spot on, but that's what concerns me. Why wouldn't you want to do... Here's the question. Is there a time in your life, and the answer is yes when you should look forward to your work as much as you do your social time and time spent with your your family. Oh, it should be. Uh, And most of the guests we have on the show today uh, in in the last several years talk about alignment, aligning your values together. Align your mind. cultures. Yes. And I think they're absolutely right. And I notice anytime I'm doing something that I really enjoy and the closer it is to my heart, a passion, the happier I am. Two words you just used closer to your heart and your passion. So what, what do they always say? If you love what you do, you'll, you'll never, never work, work a, a day, day in your, your life. life. But like... most people abdicate that. They go for, and I'm not being, I have to be careful not to be disrespectful to your listeners, and I'm not being critical of them. It, it's, it's a standard, but we need to break that standard. Well, I'm just going to go for a job. Okay, why? Is it something you really want? Is it something you want more than just about anything professionally in your life? If it's not, how much longer are you willing to give up what you want in exchange for that paycheck? And sadly, one of our guests in the past has told us that the two, uh, in, in surveys, the two ways that people think they're going to strike it rich, using those words as we all appreciate them, is either lotto or a lawsuit. And I've been paying lotto for years and years. The most I ever won was $100. Occasionally those $5 tickets come through now. 
but nothing more than that. No. And if you took the law of averages, you'd say, wait a minute, if you, you know, looking at me and knowing how old I am, you would look at me and say, oh, you must have had a couple of that hit a, at least the five or $10,000 level. But no, 100 is the most, and, and I play it occasionally, not the people who play regularly, but occasionally. Um, you mentioned, Mike, that in your book, the greatest <clears throat> kept secret is that the subconscious mind is ultimately powerful. That's something I think most people really don't know about. We don't really talk about, I haven't heard people talk about my subconscious mind as opposed to conscious. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us about that? And why do you say it's so powerful? Again, if if I can tell a story. Absolutely. Okay, great. I love stories. I love stories. Once upon a time. There we go. We're going back decades and decades and decades ago. True story. Third grade little boy is in his class and his teacher calls him up to the, um, to the, the front. As he approaches, the teacher is folding a letter and putting it in an envelope. She seals the envelope. She hands it to the little boy. She goes, you're to bring this home. You're not to read it. You give it to your mother. Do you understand? And the little boy said, yes. So the little boy goes home that day, walks in the door, standard answer from every kid. How was school? Fine. What'd you learn? <laughs> Nothing. He says, oh, by the way, mom, my teacher gave you this letter. Well, give me, give, gave me the letter to give to you. So she says, what does it say? He says, I don't know. She instructed me not to read it, but I was to give it to you. She opens the letter. She reads it. Now, the boy is very inquisitive. He wants to know what's in this letter. And the mother looks at it, reads it, and then smiles ear to ear. And she grabs him and hugs him, and she says, the letter says you're a genius, and we can no longer teach you because we have nothing else th that we can teach you. You're smarter than all of us, paraphrasing, obviously says, I'm so proud of you. You're a genius. Whacks him on the backside, says, go out and play. I'll let you know when dinner's ready. Oh, he goes out. He's a like, great day. I'm a genius. Many years pass. Many, many years pass. The, 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 the little boy is now a grown man. His mother passes away. He's going through her personal effects, and he finds the letter. He recognizes it at the bottom of a, of a dresser drawer, and he takes the letter out. And the letter says, your son is an imbecile. There is absolutely nothing we can teach him you need to keep him home. You're wasting our time. What's the kid's name? <laughs> oh, it's going to be one of those where it's either Einstein. True story. What's the kid's name? Churchill or Einstein? Thomas Alva Edison. Here we go. Subconscious mind. The mother planted the seed in this little boy's mind. That little boy lived to that mimetic or meme for the remainder of his life. I'd like to think he was a little bit more than an imbecile. With that being said, when, before the, the, uh, the show began, you had said something about your grandson and that, you know, this book may, and I asked you to change it to this book will, in fact, influence your life. We have to be careful of the words we choose. Your subconscious mind hears what you say, accepts it as gospel truth, and then will go about to find and attract the, the very tangible thing in your life that you told it to go get. We have to be careful of the words we choose. The affirmation, I am, I can, I will, is an affirmation. It's also obviously the title of the book. And Mike, as I said to you before the show, um, when we were just talking, uh, I like this book so much that I'm putting together a book just for my own family, not to publish or anything. And I took out many of the quotes from your book, wrote them down. And I, of course, in the, it's for him in the years to come. He's only two years old now, but that he can look back and learn from some of the great people I've had on the show. So I think that lets you know and to our audience how much I think of you. I want to let our audience know if you're just tuning in, our guest today is Mike Sims. He's written a book, I Am, I Can, I Will. Uh, he's here today with us on The Secrets of Success on 90.3 WHPC, the voice of Nassau Community College. I'm your host, Bill Horan. And my next question to Mike is, if someone wants to get this book, they like what they're hearing from you, you have a beautiful radio voice, where can they get a copy of I Am, I Can, I Will? It is available on Amazon.com. Uh, I am, I can, I will, but then type in my name, Michael Sims, M-I-C-H-A-E-L-S-I-M-M-S, -M -M and you'll see it come up. Uh, to give you a description, it is a gentleman that is climbing. Um, bear with me because it's in the book as to what he was. Looks like a mountain climber. On it there. is. That... It's Mount, Mount Adams in Washington, but that's that's a picture of my friend Paul, who oh, was actually who, who traversed that. And <laughs> I asked him for it because I just thought it so depicts the book and the attitude necessary to go accomplish everything you want in life. So if you type, I am, I can, I will, in my name, it'll appear. One of the statements you have in your book is that 
you can eat an elephant. Now, not that I want to eat an elephant, <laughs> but I have to ask you that question because uh, our producer might eat an elephant. Michael in there, he's always got some wow. strange foods with him. But uh, I don't mean for quantity. I mean just he has strange foods, and I don't think of people eating But what does that mean? You can eat an elephant, and then the second statement is one bite at a time. But think about exactly. it. Exactly. You've got this enormous goal in front of you, and if your goals don't scare the daylights out of you, you are not dreaming big enough. And people look at this enormous goal and they think, there's no way I can tackle it. And that's what I'm saying. You can eat an elephant just one bite at a time. It's a step-by-step process. If you were to take a shot in the dark, I'm asking you a lot of questions, but I'm having fun with you. How many bricks are in the, are in the, um, the Empire State Building? If I did my corrections right, there's a little over nine billion. Okay. I, I have no idea on that one. Shot in so, the dark. Okay. Right. I did, did the math. My math is probably okay. wrong. Never have it been my strong suit. Nine billion. Yes or no? That brick, those bricks were done one brick at a time. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. And then look what we have to, to show for it. What do your goals have to show for it when you eat an elephant one bite at a time? When you lay down one brick at a time, over a period of time, you've got this magnificent goal that you've received. You've got this magnificent goal that you have built. Look at the Empire State Building. And that's a fraction of what you could accomplish in your life, the, mag- the magnitude of that. One brick at a time. That's all you have to do. This is Mike Sims. As always, I appreciate you taking the time to listen. This is part one of the excerpts from the radio show Secrets to Success. Have an absolutely awesome day. You deserve nothing less. Be well. Be well.